Guys, today I'm going to be giving you a guide to the Duality Dungeon. This is the new dungeon with Season of the Haunted. Lots of great things with this dungeon, including its lore, and I can't wait to dive into that as well. Today, though, we're going to be going over mechanics and builds to be using for this dungeon. And you really do want to do this dungeon because there are some amazing weapons that are dropping from this thing, including a three-round burst linear fusion rifle, a grenade launcher that can come with chill clip, as well as the new exotic sword. Now, if you want to begin the Duality Dungeon, the first thing you'll need to do is head to the tower and hit up Hawthor, who will then then direct you to the moon for the dungeon. It'll be just below the containment destination and the required light for the normal mode is actually pretty easy at 1550. Although when we start talking about builds for this thing, I am going to give you builds based on the master mode version of this dungeon as we did do it in master. And if you already kind of narrow down what you're going to bring build wise into the master, well, then it's going to be even easier doing the normal mode. Although I do suggest doing the normal mode first just to get used to the mechanics. Now, upon entering the port into the duality dungeon, you may recognize the infamous tribute hall. This is of course from Season of Opulence. Ares will be standing by a large statue of Callus that once sat at the hall's entrance. Here she'll instruct you on how to enter Callus's mindscape before enacting the ritual and opening a portal before you. Jump and once you land you'll be facing a metal grate that you can't pass through. Now through that gate on the opposite side of the large room there will be a bell of conquest. Rainy bells? That's right that was actually an artifact a few seasons ago. Now if you're having a hard time seeing it it's at the bottom of the stairs glowing red. You shoot it a few times and it will flip you into the nightmare realm, opening up a path in front of you. This is a constant mechanic throughout this dungeon, so get used to shooting bells to switch from the overworld to the nightmare realm, to pass obstacles and progress onward. Now you push up to the bell that you just shot and you'll see a shadow-like ring around it. Your team has to be actually standing in this ring when the bell is shot to be transported back to the overworld. And again, you only have to be standing in this ring in the nightmare realm. In the overworld, you can shoot it wherever. Now if someone is not in the ring when it's shot, they will die. Hence why you want to shoot it while everyone is standing next to the bell. Now, if you die moving through these areas, the respawn could set you back to the beginning, forcing you to shoot the bells on your own. If this happens, have your teammates wait on a plate next to a bell while you catch up. And as long as your other fire team members are on the plate next to the bell, they won't be killed while you catch up. You're essentially just going to pass back and forth between the nightmare realm and the overworld until you made your way through the three large rooms and have entered the cloning chambers for the first encounter. And again, if you have a hard time knowing where to go, wherever you normally shoot the bell in the overworld, going into the nightmare realm, you would need to physically get to that bell. And again, it's two different realities. Platforms can suddenly appear in the nightmare realm. Simultaneously, they can also disappear. So be careful where you're standing. Now going into the first encounter of this dungeon, the nightmare of Galarin or Galarin. Y'all remember this guy, right? Crown of Sorrow. You're actually going to be dealing with an immune nightmare of Galarin. Now to start this encounter, you essentially just shoot the bell of conquest. You'll be transferred to the nightmare realm where an immune Galarin will be waiting for you and a debuff will be applied to you, which is essentially nightmare collapsing, which if it runs out, your fire team will wipe. Right away, find the open doors and kill the standard bearers inside. And there's actually four different doors. Now, the correct door is always the door that has ads in it. And you'll be looking for these yellow bar scions. You'll kill them and then claim the standard essence. Now, you can do one door at a time or you can actually do two at a time. And if your team feels very confident, do two at a time. However, upon claiming one or even two of these essences, you're going to want to look for these bell keepers. They're actually called honored bell keepers and you have to kill them to unlock the bell. And normally the bell that it unlocks is on the opposite side. But upon killing those bell keepers and then heading to that bell and everyone back on the plate, you'll shoot the bell and head back to the overworld and then proceed to deposit the essences on their corresponding plates. Now, once this essence is deposited, the door in front of it will open. Now, again, you can split up here and I would say in normal mode, easily you can split up here, but in master mode, you do want to stay together. You'll have a number of ads that spawn in and in master mode, you actually have an unstoppable champion in here, which I both highly advise having a void weapon and an unstoppable mod on if you are doing the master mode. But just for the base, you can of course split your team up into two. Now upon clearing those ads out, enter the room in which you just opened and then proceed to turn around and shoot the bell. Now this will actually teleport you back to the nightmare realm and you'll actually have a number of Galarins rushing you called Shades of Galarin. They're actually pretty weak, but they can overwhelm you. So if you need to pop a super here, go right ahead. But upon killing these guys and then moving past them, one of the doors will open open, allowing you to go out to the main area. And the Nightmare of Galarin will now be vulnerable. This is when you can actually begin doing DPS. Now, there's a number of options here that you can do in terms of damage. I heard Lament was doing pretty good or whatever your favorite sword is. And I feel like in normal mode, you can get away with that. Personally, I found having one well right there in the middle and just swapping between both with a horde and a linear fusion rifle while someone on our team was rocking divinity was really, really good. And I bring this up because in the master mode, there are times where the Nightmare of Galarin will swing past you and just completely 
completely leave the well. And so if you're rocking a sword, you'll have to chase after him. And then suddenly you have no healing and it's a good chance you'll die. Which is why having one div user, some linears, some wither horde shots to swap in between, that was working out really well for me. Now you need to keep an eye on your nightmare collapsing timer while you are doing damage to gallery. You don't want it to run out mid DPS or you will wipe. Which is why it's actually good for someone to kill those bell keepers so that you can just run directly to the bell in the last 10 seconds of this DPS phase to get back into the overworld. Now if you want phase them, great. If not, pretty much rinse and repeat. Now on the way to the second encounter, you're actually going to run into this statue room. And before you proceed any further, you want to head to one of the doors on the balcony to the back left from where you enter. Inside you'll actually be finding a secret chest and you can see by the door being cracked. So if you're having a hard time finding that door, just look for the one that's opened. Now you're going to head back out and you're going to need to unlock the first door of the vault. Take note of the statue positions in the overall before entering into the nightmare realm. You want the statues to be facing directly to the center. And essentially guys, you're going to go into the nightmare realm and press this button on the back of these statues and it's going to shift the statue counterclockwise by 90 degrees. Of course, you cannot see this because this is happening in the overworld. So remember how many times you need to hit that button in order to turn these statues correctly. Once all of these are facing the bell of conquest though, that bottom vault door will open and now you can enter the second encounter. Now this is when the dungeon gets pretty interesting. This is the second encounter called the vault and you're essentially going to be facing three mini bosses. They're not nearly as meaty as Galarin, but there's still three different nightmares. Gahulk, Imminent, and Euroa. Probably killing these names right now. The main thing with this one guys is all about survivability and quick burns. Similar to the previous encounter with Galarin, you'll need to acquire the correct banner essences from the nightmare realm and then deposit them on their corresponding plates in the overworld in order to trigger the DPS phase. Now while you're in the nightmare realm, you will have that nightmare collapsing debuff again, which of course will wipe your fire team if it reaches zero. Now opposite of where you rally is a set of stairs leading up to an empty bell frame. For the purpose of this guide, the back will be where the stairs are and the front will be the side where the rally flag is. Now when the encounter begins, several things will happen at once. As will spawn from the walls around the room, two honored bell keepers will appear on the left and right beneath the stairs and by the rally flag. Two of the four plates in the center will display a symbol above them, which will either be dog, sun, axis, or cup, indicating which standard essences you need to acquire. The first thing you need to do is kill the bell keepers so that the bell of conquest will spawn within its frame. Next, you need to pick up on which one of the essences to go for in the nightmare realm. And you can actually go to these small columns on either side of the room in the four different quadrants. And you can see on these small columns, which side is which. So essentially just match dogs with dogs, cup with cup, etc. And really want to just go ahead and spread out at least two of your teammates to those associated symbols and then have the third teammate shoot the bell of conquest. Now the areas where each one of these symbols are, back left is dogs, back right is axis, front left is sun, and front right is cup. Again, the stairs in the back. The rally flag is in the front. Once you're in position, shoot the bell and you will enter the nightmare realm. Now we were splitting our teammates going in two different directions, both of us picking a symbol. But if you're having issues, and I do suggest in the master mode version of the dungeon to really just attack one symbol at a time together. But in the nightmare realm, one person should remain in the middle to kill the bell keepers. That way one of the bells can go ahead and open up and you won't have any downtime when you're running back to the bell. It will either spawn at the front or the back, essentially where the rally flag is or the top of the stairs. Now for the guardians going to collect these standard essences, you're going to need to kill the ads and pretty much all the ads in order to spawn the standard bearer. Now the standard bearer and the normal mode encounter is a cabal captain, not a scion like the other encounters. Now if you're at the wrong side and you actually kill the wrong standard bearer, nothing will drop and you will lose 15 seconds from the nightmare collapsing debuff, which can actually lead to a wipe. Now once both standard essences have been acquired, everyone will need to go back to the bell in the middle area to return to the overworld. Now once you're back into the overworld, you will then take the essences to their corresponding plates to deposit them. Upon doing so, the nightmare will then become vulnerable in the middle. And again, not super thick. You can easily burn them down. And if you're taking too much heat, I do advise just going to the backside, getting on the stairs and do damage from there. Now there is not a set window in which you can do this DPS. You've got plenty of time guys. So take your time here. Worry about surviving, killing all the ads. There is no huge rush to kill that nightmare in the middle. Now once he's dead, a second boss, another immune nightmare will then spawn. And you'll actually see a notification saying something clicks within the vault door. Now you're essentially going to repeat this whole process two more times to fully unlock the vault door and finish this encounter. Again, no limit for the DPS on these bosses, but ads will keep spawning. So take your time, stay 
alive and you should easily get through this encounter. Now, if you are doing the master mode version of this encounter, you will be dealing with barrier champions when you go deal with the standard bear, which is why in the normal mode, it's completely fine for your team to split up and for you to go get your essences by yourself. But in the master mode, I do highly suggest you going together. That way you can deal with that barrier champion, those ads and that standard bear together. And in the master mode, it is kind of difficult getting to the middle of that room and placing the symbol into the correct plate, which is why I was actually rocking Icarus Dash just to help me scoot a little faster. I can get out there and get back out. And again, especially in the master mode, you want to place your well on those stairs. That consolidates the ads there and it keeps you from getting surrounded and you can deal with them much easier. Now, before going into the third encounter, you will find yourself in this room, this box room called the depths. Now, if you look under this box, which by the way, is giving me some pyramid ship vibes. You can come down here and actually collect one of these memories, which we're going to talk about a little more here in a little bit. But then you can also slide right under here. And voila, there is a chest down here. This is the second hidden chest for this dungeon. Now, the third and final encounter. Bell of Conquest, Nightmare of Kaido, Princess Imperius. Now, the third and final encounter will have you fight a Nightmare of Kaido. Now, you're going to be utilizing all the mechanics from essentially the first two encounters in this fight. There are three small bells for transferring you to and from the Nightmare Realm, four chain pillars, as well as four platforms on the edge of the room. Now, once the encounter begins, two plates will light up with symbols in front of the chain pillars. Now, these, of course, correspond to one of the four platforms with doors on the edge of the arena. The back left is sun. The back right is axe. The front left is dog. The front right is cup. And you can actually see the symbol above the doors while in the overall. Now, the issue with this is when you go into the nightmare realm, these disappear. So you do need to remember your symbol. And I do advise dedicating one person to each symbol while leaving the third person clearing ads. Now, the room opens up with you clearing ads. And once you have your symbols, go ahead and start walking toward the associated platform that you're going to be going to. And you can go ahead and just jump up on it if you want. And whoever your third is that's going to be clearing ads needs to shoot the bell. You will then enter the nightmare realm and you'll kill the scion standard bearer standing on that correct platform. Upon killing them, you will then collect a standard essence. Now, again, just like before, kill the correct scion because if you kill the wrong one, your nightmare collapsing debuff will be reduced. Now, the essences do stack and I should have mentioned this before. At any point, if you need to have one person grab both essences, you can. So if you do want to just dedicate one person to doing that, that's fine. Although I will say dividing this responsibility up between two different people does help a lot. Now, whoever it is that's going to be clearing ads in the middle, they need to focus on killing the bell keepers that spawn. Once these bell keepers are dead, you'll then congregate on the bell that spawns. And this will take you back to the overworld. Deposit the essence into the corresponding plates when you get back into the overworld and then proceed to kill ads and other bell keepers that spawn in. And you'll even have like centurions and some other meteor ads that are also coming in. Now, before ringing that bell another time, make a note of the two new symbols that spawn. And again, just like a second ago, start making your way to the platforms associated with that symbol. You're essentially going to repeat the process of entering the nightmare realm again, grabbing the standard essence from the scion standard bearer. But upon returning back to the overworld, this time when you deposit the last two essences, the chains inside the pillars you deposit will begin to glow red. You'll then shoot the amethyst on the front of them. And you really only have to shoot one of them. And this is when you get that big bong, that large ram up in the air will swing and impact the giant bell, which would then teleport your entire fire team into the nightmare realm to then begin the damage phase. Now, this part right here can be easily messed up. The nightmare of Kaido will begin to move across the room toward one of the bells. The goal is to get Kaido to one of those bells, whichever one she chooses to go to, shoot the bell that she's standing next to, or at least relatively close to. It will then stun her, which then allows you to proceed to do damage to her. The main focus for like the first five to 10 seconds that you need to have when you TP to this room is to kill these six bell keepers. It's two bell keepers per bell, and you really just want to kill them immediately. Now, granted, you can't always do that, especially in the master mode. They're kind of meaty. So focus on whichever one Kaido is going to first. Normally, we would kill the middle ones immediately because we all spawn relatively close to the middle. And then we see wherever she's going to afterwards. Now, like we did earlier with Galarin, Divinity and Linears were fantastic here. I was doing Witherhorde swap offs and the damage was very, very good. And you could throw a well down. And I do advise, especially in the master mode here, guys, throw the well down first before she gets close to the bell or she will stop and she does insta kill you if you're not leveled. Also, another pro tip, if she so happens to be getting too close to the bell before you actually kill the bell keepers, you can run to her and actually get her to stop. This will actually keep her locked in place for a second and keep her from getting to that bell. Because if she does get to that bell before you actually kill the bell keepers and shoot the bell to stun her, that will actually mess up the DPS phase. Pretty much 
that's requiring you to go back to the overworld and starting all over. Now, upon doing DPS at every one of these bells in the arena, you would then teleport back to the overworld and essentially repeat this entire process all over again. Now, when you do kill her, this is where the exotic sword drops. We didn't get it, but what I'm being told is that this is farmable. You can essentially keep farming this dungeon over and over again for these weapons, for the exotic, etc. However, there are triumphs that actually contribute to the drop chance of the exotic being increased, such as doing the master mode version of this dungeon, also unlocking all the memories throughout the dungeon, as well as soloing the base version of this dungeon, all of which will contribute to that exotic having an increased drop chance. However, this is not necessary in order to get the exotic. People already got the exotic as just a base drop from completing this dungeon. Now, some suggestions that I have, especially if you are going to be tackling the master mode version of this dungeon. Number one, rock max resilience. Guys, this is granting you 40% damage resist, which considering most of us are under leveled right now because it's a new season, you 100% want to take advantage of max resilience. Even if you're on a hunter or even a warlock, rock max resilience. Number two, for the first and second encounter, I do suggest someone on your team, if not two people on your team, rocking stasis, especially in the master mode version. This made things so much easier in those first two encounters, simply because Stacy turrets and Osmio Mancy gloves were locking everything in place. Essentially, guys, just rock Osmio Mancy gloves, double Stacy, and you'll have all these enemies unlock. Lastly, I do suggest rocking a linear fusion rifle, and I was actually rocking this Reed's Regret with firing line and triple tap. The beautiful thing about triple tap is it's ammo conservation, right? The ability to create ammo after you land those hits, that allowed me to have enough damage, and essentially we had enough damage to two-face the Nightmare of Kaido, even in master mode, which is kind of messed up there toward the end. But it's definitely impossible to two-face in master mode. For us in master, survivability was really important, and we found ourselves dropping lots of wells. All three of us were pretty much rocking Phoenix Protocol, and whether we were in the room in the overworld or in the Nightmare Realm, we were constantly dropping Well of Radiance and using Phoenix Protocol to get our supers back. Now, Well's been kind of buggy here lately. If you do find a situation where it's not healing you, exit the well and then get back inside of the well. This should start the healing process. Other than that, guys, take advantage of mods like Armor of the Dying Star. For dealing with champions, I was actually using Withering Heat, which would apply a debuff after doing damage with a solar ability. I was also really depending on Well of Life, primarily when I was rocking my Colonel Mustang build. I was getting lots of melee kills and essentially all of those solar wells that I was picking up was giving me regeneration, keeping me alive. I will say in the boss room, especially in the Nightmare Realm, you need to have a void weapon, something that can deal void damage as well as solar damage, but I'm figuring most people are rocking solo 3.0, but you need to have void damage to deal with those bell keepers. LMGs are actually pretty good. They just got a buff. You can rock things like commemoration or even corrective measure. And I would actually suggest whoever it is as your divinity user to rock a void heavy to just help you clear those bell keepers very quickly. So guys, that is your guide here. Good luck this week. We'll be tracking down the exotic sword as soon as we can. For those looking to optimize a farm for the exotic sword, I actually think you can probably get a boss checkpoint and just load it over and over again and just keep doing the boss on normal mode. Granted, I have to check this for myself, but that's the theory right now. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.